Keeping the chickens safe is becoming more and more difficult as the wild animals test our defenses. And so this week on Barely Homesteading, we're going to talk about our new electric fence. So the bear attack that we had a couple weeks ago uh, taught us a couple things. One, our defenses are pretty good. Our fence kept the bear out and uh, kept the chickens safe, but we can't be repairing fencing all the time. We need something that's going to keep the bears and the mountain lions actually away. So we put in some electric fencing. So here you can see the electric fencing. We put up two strands. One strand is about two feet off the ground, and the other one's about four feet off the ground. The idea being that the lower one is going to stop animals that are coming around sniffing. They're going to hit that lower uh, line and get zapped. The higher line is for those animals that try to come and claw, grab onto the fence and pull it down. They're going to grab up higher than that two foot strand and so they're going to grab hopefully that four foot high line and get zapped there. Now every electric fence needs an energizer and we have had power in the garden here for a while and so attaching the energizer and getting power to it hasn't been too much of an issue. Unfortunately our energizer is here next to our power and the gate to the fence is way over there and so we have to come into the garden with the fence energized in order to turn it off and that's not really a, a great solution the other problem is where we have the energizer right now the kids can get to it and baby bear has already pulled off that bright red knob once now the fence was de-energized so it wasn't really a problem but we need to come up with a better position for the energizer and so what we're going to be doing today is actually moving the energizer over to closer to the gate and then putting a switch outside the, the garden gate so that we can turn the power off to the electric fence from outside the garden.
Okay, so I got the original electrical box put back together uh, and tested. Everything was working fine. So now I'm going to work on the new boxes over here. The box up top is going to be the switched outlet for the electric fence. The box on the bottom is just going to be a regular powered outlet. So both outlets are working, just tested them. Uh, didn't have power before because when I tested the other outlets, I popped the GFI just to make sure it was working and uh, forgot to reset that. So um, the upper outlet is going to be on a switch and the switch will be outside the garden. But for right now, I don't have a piece of flexible conduit to make the jog from inside the garden to outside the garden, I need to go pick one of those up. So I can't put the uh, switch, uh, get it wired up quite yet. So the upper outlet right now is just hardwired. Um, once I get that piece of flexible conduit, we'll get the switch on and then that upper uh, outlet will be uh, powered by the switch. And so let's get the Let's get the electric fence uh, all hooked back up so that it can uh, work tonight and through the rest of the weekend until I get that piece of conduit. All right, electric fence is back up and connected. Good day's work. I'll uh, get that switch wired up some evening this week and then we'll be done. So until then. Okay, good morning. And we are gonna get the electric fence finished this morning. Uh, we didn't get back to this project as soon as I would have liked. We had another project that took a bit longer than expected. So we're going to finish this up. We're going to get the switch put in uh, for this upper outlet so that we can turn the electric fence on and off outside of the garden. in over here and at end points of a box or a run uh, I prefer to put in threaded boxes so that if I have to make a change later add you know a two gang instead of a one gang or something like that I can just screw it off and put a new one on
these cutters are specially made for this type of wire. It's got a spot here where we can just strip off the outer insulation. Okay. So we can do that. Now, uh, Engineer Bear is going to learn a little bit about electricity right now. So in a, this is what we call a two-conductor wire. Okay. The reason it's a two-conductor wire is because there's two wires that are meant to be conductors, and then there's this uninsulated wire, which is a ground wire. Okay. That's for safety. The black wire is what's called the hot wire. That's the wire that has the that is always energized. Okay, and so when the power's on, if you touch the black wire, you're going to get a shock. The white wire is called the return. In order to get electricity to flow, the black and the white have to get connected. Okay, now what we're doing here is this switch that we're going to plug the uh, energizer for the electric fence in is going to be is going to be connected to this switch, which means that the hot wire, the black wire up there, is going to run over to this switch. When we turn the switch on, that will connect the black and the white here, and this white will be connected over there to the hot part of the outlet, thus completing the circuit. Okay. So at this switch, we're going to be treating both the black and the white as hot. Because depending on how the switch is turned on, they both could be energized as far as the outlet is concerned. And so when we do something like that, we're going to put some black tape on that white wire so that if someone looks at it later they know that this could be a hot wire. Okay, it's not just return, it could be hot. Since this is an outside switch uh, that's going to be out in the weather, we've got to make sure that we use a special switch plate. This switch plate is completely sealed. There's a gasket on the back side. And then around this switch uh, axis, axle, there's an O-ring in there. So this is completely sealed and you can still turn the switch on and off. is in, outlet's put back together. Let's turn the power on and test it, make sure it's working. Okay, power's back on. I'm going to test the outlets now. And I've got this uh, electrical tester. If you're doing any sort of electrical work, I highly recommend you get one of these. Super handy. It's got some diode lights down here that will tell you if you've got the uh, connections uh, correct. It's got a little table. Of, uh, of what the lights mean. So we're going to test this out. Sounding good. I need you to go outside to the switch in a minute. Okay. This upper one doesn't have anything, it doesn't have any lights because we haven't turned the switch on. Go ahead, turn the switch on. And we got good lights. Turn it off. And they're back off again. And so now, Okay, 
Turn it on. Vent is on. Turn it off. Good. All right. So electric fence is complete. This is going to be a great addition to the garden as far as protection goes. We've had a bear attack recently, as you've seen, and so this will hopefully keep the larger uh, predators from attacking the chickens and getting into the garden. With the switch outside the garden, it's going to be a lot easier for us to uh, turn on and off the electric fence. And a couple of things that I do want to say about working with electricity outside, you do want to make sure that you have it all sealed off. We've used this outdoor PVC pipe for the conduits to keep the water out. Also on these outlets, we have a weather resistant outlets. Even though I have uh, waterproof covers on them, I still use the weather resistant covers, or uh, excuse me, weather resistant outlets just in case moisture does get in. And we've got the uh, waterproof uh, switch cover to uh, keep water intrusion from getting into that switch. So do be careful. Uh, electricity can be dangerous and you don't want to burn down uh, the garden you just created uh, by having an electrical problem. With that, this is Lumberjack from Barely Homesteading saying use it up, wear it out, make it do or do without. So we woke up to this this morning. Looks like a bear grabbed this sack of chicken feed and drug it from over there by our garage door, so about 12 feet, and got into it, realized that it wasn't anything that it wanted, and so left it. Luckily, took a look around the garden area and the chickens, and it doesn't look like we had any damage, which means either the bear didn't try to get in or tried to get in and got a shock from our new electric fence. Either way, hopefully it won't be back.